it's time for plenty of entertainment, plenty of conversation, and it's all coming to you right here on Crick Buzz Live. At the start of this uh, tournament, it's been all about letters. A team, B team, C team, D team. That's all it's been about. All we can say with great assuredness right here on Crick Buzz Live is that we are bringing you an A team that, of course, also has a Z in it. So we are pretty much covering the entire gamut. Time to say hello to my wonderful colleagues and guests on the show, Harsha Bhogle and Zed for Zaheer Khan. Good afternoon, gents. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bit, bit, bit unfair. Why, why does Zach always look like he's ready to go to a party? All well dressed, coffee, here, all neat. It's not fair. It's just a well deserved rest which I got, Harsha. And I think, I think everyone did, uh, especially after the last tournament uh, in, in India. The big one uh, was uh, was paused. So after that, you know, I got plenty of time to recuperate, uh, relax, refresh, and now really looking forward to the season. You know, can't uh, can't wait for the match to start. It's been a while that we've uh, we've seen coloured clothing and uh, in India playing after a long time. So looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm glad you said pause. We are all set to unpause ourselves here for this bit of cricket and what's going to follow. But Harsha, let me come straight to you. Uh, there's been a lot of build-up to this for a, for a series. Otherwise, in a format particularly, that tends to get a little bit of a short shift. What are you looking forward to most from this particular series? Look, I think the pressure is all on India because India have to win this 6-0. Given the, all the troubles that Sri Lanka is going through. For Sri Lanka, it's a nothing-to-lose situation. They have trouble in their administration. They have trouble with the players. They have trouble with contracts and unknown players coming in. They've got nothing to lose. Uh, they're coming off a horror run over the last 12 months or so. As far as I'm concerned, I'm looking at these three and especially the next three games as a build-up to the T20 World Cup. India don't play any internationals. So I'm looking at key players, the experienced players like Shikhar Dhawan, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, you know, just to remind us a little bit, you know what, we're around and we've been match winners for you. I'm very keen to see how Hardik Pandya comes through because if he bowls, it changes the way India's T20 World Cup side looks like. And I'm looking at little other things. I'm looking at how Prithvi Shaw goes goes about things. So, uh, you know, those those youngsters coming along and I'm looking at Kulcha. I'm, I'm hoping that they play together because if th this is probably their last chance to play together. If they don't make it here, they probably won't play again. So, those are the things I'm looking forward to beyond who wins and loses. Fair enough. The last time we heard about Six Love, it was uh, in reference to Roger Federer. But we'll try and stick to the cricket for the moment and see if India can pull off a Six Love here. Zahid, what about you? What, what, what's, uh, yeah, what, what's whetting your appetite for this series? Well, I think uh, for me, what's the uh, exciting part is like in conversations I've been I've been mention, uh, mentioning, you know, just the casual conversations uh, that uh, the future of cricket, you know, how it's going to be. I mean, maybe pandemic has kind of you know fast track those kind of things and and what you're seeing right now you know where uh, a, a team actually the is is in england you know playing a different format you know the squad is there that squad is also strong enough for uh, for, for indian team and and then there's a squad uh, in in sri lanka you know so i think this is a glimpse of future you know and and, and future has come to us uh, uh, much uh, much more faster than expected you know, cricket has been evolving. I, I felt that uh, you know this series is is in that sense maybe going to be a hallmark series. You know, where uh, where a, a team is actually touring a different country and and a team is gone and played a, a, a different series, different format. You know, so so I feel uh, from the cricketing point of view, going forward, you'll see more of this. You know, you you'll see specialists uh, playing a specialist uh, 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 what they are uh, they're specialized in uh, a particular format. And uh, the the players who are playing across the formats will possibly have the choice to make, you know, which which format they want to opt for. Or in some cases, you know, the board might say that okay, you know, this is the important series. We want our key players to uh, to be participant of uh, of, of that series. Uh, so yeah, so from that point of view, I'm very excited to see how the series goes. Yeah, he makes a very valid point, Gautam. Because look at say teams like West Indies. Look at even uh, England, Australia have done it in the past. There's already a differentiation emerging. So from a purely commercial point of view, and I know everyone gets emotionally involved with the game, but the game is run commercially. From a commercial point of view, to have two Indian teams playing at the same time throws open all kinds of possibilities. But there's a couple of points here. One is, of course, the ability to be able to bring out two, two 
teams, which India can, maybe a handful of teams around the world can. England certainly look like they have the bench strength. West Indies, in a sense, send out a very different team to play the white uh, flannels and their uh, limited overs form of the game. But it's also, Zaheer, about the bubble. Because there's one thing about, as Harsha said, commercial. It's one thing to have the ability. Right now, as Rahul Dravid briefly mentioned, the bubble is sort of forcing you to say that let's not have everybody go into every bubble at the same time. Yes, correct. I think, you know, it, uh, but to me, it was inevitable. You know, to me, the game was going to evolve in, uh, in, on, on, on that path. What pandemic has done has basically fast-tracked things. You know, so, so bubble has, has given you that, uh, that lookout. You know, where you started to think now, okay, the players might get exhausted. You know, they need a break from this uh, strict routine. And, uh, and you know, the, they just need to uh, refresh, go away from the bubble life, uh, which is very restrictive at times. Uh, you don't have the freedom. So, uh, so this has basically, you know, the, put things into perspective now. And, uh, and, and, and you, you're talking about, what, uh, seven, eight teams actually competing at, uh, at uh, the test level. You know, so so you can focus on that in, in 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 that manner, and then you know have the white ball cricket go on because all the leagues are emerging all, all uh, across the globe, and 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 that is something which uh, is 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 going to make things happen in in this direction because uh, because I feel uh, a T20 format you know will will bring the associate nations uh, closer to the top teams you know, much, much faster than if you're expecting them to play the longish format or, or, or the real uh, f- format of cricket uh, and which is longer as well. So, you know, so that journey is going to be very long, but the white ball journey, you know, might be uh, be shorter. And and you, you've seen that with uh, with ICC trying, uh, uh, trying the approach of including associate nations in uh, in ICC tournaments. Uh, the T20 uh, coming up now in October is, the, is a great example of that. They have kind of tiered it. You know, so so that tier needs to grow for the game to grow, and I think uh, this is a step in the in, in the right direction. Happened through the circumstances, but I think it was uh, uh, inevitable. Yeah, just to just to complete the point, Harsha, I know. Zahir mentioned the circumstances. We're doing it for a reason now. In the past, we've seen Australia field two teams in their triangular, which they made into a quadrangular. India sent two teams when one went to Toronto, one went to the Commonwealth Games in Kuala Lumpur. But now, it's all about the bubble. So, just to complete this point, Harsha, it's not just the players. You've been in the bubble. So has Zahir. How tough really is it because of which we're having to do this? It, It is difficult, but you need to put things in perspective. Uh, one of the things that emerged from the bubble was the, some of the players said we actually got to know each other better. So the bonding bonding increased. There's no getting away anywhere. So yeah, I mean you're not getting enough fresh air. Maybe you're stuck in your room all the time. You're not you're not meeting uh, close people. Yes, but you need to put things in perspective. It's not easy, but it's far easier than it is for most people. Most people have suffered much much more from the pandemic. So I actually heard a couple of players saying that I felt safer inside the bubble than outside because you're getting tested regularly you're not meeting anyone outside it's probably a safer place but but yes uh, and it doesn't look like this bubble is going away anywhere Gautam so I think in your minds you've got to get used to it very interesting what Tom Harrison of England said that come what may we're not going down these bubble this bubble route again so you just need 30 35 40 players I mean, look how many are in England 23 24 players are in England and India still put out a strong side so that's the positive side effect of the bubble but it's not easy yeah, let's uh, let's talk about uh, the host nation. We were we were going to have a little discussion on our good friend, the former skipper Arjuna Ranatunga, but we'll we'll leave him alone for the moment because he sort of made the point about uh, where India stands as far as their letters are concerned. But in terms of Sri Lanka, I mean, you can say all you like about the visitors who have come. For circumstances beyond their control, yes, uh, Sri Lanka have uh, ended up with a squad that they wouldn't have wanted to put out against any team, let alone the best Indian team or the fourth best Indian team. This is what firstly happened to them in England. They came back with uh, absolutely no wins under their belt. And of course, a little bit of uh, controversy with the bubble as well. Plus an injury now, very recently, to Kusal Pereira, who was that one name that you said, okay, fine, he can be the talisman for Sri Lanka. He's missing as well. The likes of Angelo Matthews, not around. Zaheer, this is not ideal to be facing a team like India, no matter which Indian team turns up. And we know we're all strong. Well, we, we all know, you know Sri Lanka has been uh, having uh, the problems of their own. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not the recent one. You know, it's, it's, it's been there since, you know, the, the, the greats 
of the of the game for them you know the mahila and uh, sangha you know parted ways uh, with the, with the team had to uh, had to move on with their lives and and move away from cricket so so after that you know you you've seen there are too many changes that there, there has not been a stability or 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 the the transformation which had to happen with that team you know though uh, uh, though talent is is all there uh, but uh, the chances and the opportunities which uh, which players uh, need you know to establish themselves to evolve themselves at at at, at the big stage uh, into uh, uh, great players you know that that uh, that system that protocols uh, around that has has not been consistent i would say and and sri lankan cricket had to play the uh, pay the brunt of that uh, so 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 that's the way i see sri lankan cricket yes you know uh, uh, they have been making that effort mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but it's, it's still a long way ahead uh, for them in terms of uh, getting to what they were used to as a as a team at a global level yeah just a quick update for everyone uh, dasun shanaka has decided that the sri lankans on their first outing will bat first so we're going to come more to that in a moment uh, shikhar dhawan also wanted to uh, make first use with the willow but it's sri lanka who are batting first harsha just to finish off on that point we saw that sri lankan squad all the names in blue that we had highlighted earlier were names that weren't even in england so you've got a lot of newcomers a lot of almost it's almost an academy kind of situation for sri lanka and this is a team that used to walk into the knockout and the last stage of icc uh, tournaments at one yeah. point in time they made five finals in there between 7 and 14 they made five finals and then the team came apart look sri lanka will never be short of ability at least in the immediate short term i don't know what the long term implications are because a lot of players went away and someone like a vanindu hasaranga emerged he's one of the hot players on on the world circuit just now but my issue with sri lanka is a take off from what from what zack said which is with all the turmoil around sri lanka with the anti corruption turmoil with all the uh, change in captains the contract issues with all these things the players are not growing i mean i looked at avishka fernando i looked at oshada oshada fernando kusal mendes is a much talked about case none of these players including angelo matthews who i thought was better than what he became became the players they could so now this this team is built around dhananjay de silva who's also been around for a while hasaranga and and uh, the dushman the chamira that, that's it really and there's all the stock that dasun shanaka has uh, has brokered a peace deal the players are unhappy with them because the contract negotiations broke down so i don't think they're in a happy place uh, sri lanka at the moment and that's contributing to it eventually the board will have to get its act together and and and, and just ensure that players are growing yeah i think i think uh, the key word that harsha just said zahir was happy place and you know whether you look at it a national team or whether you look at the kind of a franchise setup like your part of zahid no matter what talent you have there if you're a happy unit then it makes all the difference absolutely and and uh, and you know how how are you going to achieve that you know by 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 keeping by retaining the similar set of players you know who, who are playing together for longer time it it doesn't happen by chance you know you have to work towards it at times you have to give uh, uh, you have to identify players you have to identify talent and and then give them enough enough time to mature i think you know you you, you cannot really uh, just achieve that by 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 giving them uh, uh, you know time on the bench i would say like you know the, if if you look at the sri lankan squad they've been they've been around for a while you know the names we are familiar with for last four five years but when you look at the number of matches they played at the international level that is shocking and and th that too if you if you just kind of look closely into it uh, the uh, the the strings of consistent uh, matches is is shorter and shorter so that doesn't really help you know that there is a mental side uh, also comes into play you know you you, you ask any player who who's had uh, stop and start kind of a career you know he always fights that one battle which is you know am i uh, am i assured my spot here you know how can you think of the next step if you're not sure of of the first step you know so so that is something which has been happening uh, with them which which i think you know the uh, uh, the the administration is is looking uh, looking closely to change you know and if if they are uh, going in with that kind of approach uh then slowly slowly things will uh, will will fall into place uh, because when when you look at this sri lankan side you know they have enough role models to look at uh they have history which which they can uh, take pride in uh you have uh, teams touring sri lanka and uh, no matter how strong they were at home 
you know uh, once you go to sri lanka you always used to feel that okay you know sri lankans when you are at the, at their backyard you know you can't take them lightly and that's what the record also shows uh, so so that is something which is changed which is uh, which is uh, a, a really sad part uh, when you look at this team yeah certainly is we can obviously very shortly start talking about the possible combinations one thing given that it's lunch time that will always interest me and that depends on your choice of cuisine is if we're going to have kulcha for lunch today or not and i have a suspicion we might but we'll come to that in a moment uh in fact maybe we can confirm that and 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 maybe kick off a discussion on that harsha yes for the first time since world cup 2019 in an odi they come together I mean, look at their numbers from 2017 to 2019. I mean, they used to just come twirl their fingers over, pick up wickets. What Kuldeep got 80 odd wickets, Chahal got 70 plus wickets. But post 19, yes, and and I don't know, maybe Zach's got a better idea. Post Dhoni, I suspect, is where the careers have just started to slide down a little bit, especially for Kuldeep. And I think he's got to play each of these three games. purely to tell us and to tell himself does he now belong at this level or does he have to go back do something and come back you have to give him these three games given how good he's been uh, over the years for india and chels also hit a bit of a plateau so you know this kind of side this kind of setup relatively less pressure if they can flower here then it could kick off their careers if they don't do well here they're struggling i mean i looked at economy rates so, uh, kuldeep has hardly played and even chels got economy rates in t20 upwards of 9 in recent times upwards of 6 in in odi cricket or thereabouts so i i'm very happy that that they are together and if uh, if hardik can bowl a little bit then it takes a little pressure off the lead of the five lead bowlers so i'm very happy for those two but i have a lot of time for bhuvneshwar kumar man i mean every time bhuvi plays for india he's i mean can you imagine both bumrah and bhuvi in form going into the t20 world cup so i'm also going to be watching uh, bhuvi very very closely but before we before we look at puvi uh, just a quick reaction on the mental aspect we talked a lot about kuldeep yadav uh, zahid there was talk about uh, <coughs> mumbai indians maybe wanting to get him into their fold it's really him being nurtured as an individual that's as important as what actually comes out of that hand but when you when you're talking about kulcha together i think you know, there are various factors which actually you know uh, led to where uh, things went with them you know as 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 a bowling pair uh a to uh, to start with you know uh, one of them needed to really really bat well you know for the other to support in in the playing level you know so so that's how it all started you know to achieve the right balance you uh, as team management you started to make that call of of okay just playing one you know which which in turn was uh, was was affecting them uh, together because they were bowling brilliantly in in partnership and and one of the main reasons was like you know you have one bowler who is slow through the air you know who likes to give a lot of air which is kuldeep and then you have uh, you have chahal who is who is smart and and uh, and and really really on the money you know when uh, when it comes to analyzing the batter or understanding a situation so in partnership they were actually working very well uh, but because of the balance of the team you know team management had to move away from that which in turn affected them their uh, their approach or or the mental side of the game uh, with with kuldeep I, i i felt you know as as he evolved and as as he moved on uh, moved along in his career uh he kind of uh, started to get confused around you know whether he wants to be that bowler who is uh, who is going to be at times expensive but consistently going to pick wickets uh maybe you know no one really had that kind of confidence chat with him you know where where you say that okay fine this is the style of your bowling you know at times you're going to be expensive at times you might not take wickets but as a team we are looking you to just be this sort of a bowler you know this this is what you're bringing to the table uh in uh, in uh, in uh, in reality what happened was you know he was he was maybe you know forced to change his bowling style you know and maybe the talks was more around oh he's slow through the air you know he's not doing a b c d uh, and he needs to get better at that and he he started his journey on that so for rather than focusing on what has been his strength he kind of went in the other direction and then realized that okay you know the, the performances are not falling in place and then the pressure starts uh, to get to him as a player and now he he has to make a call uh, but to make that call you know you already are under pressure of of international cricket now what do you do so that is that has been uh, uh, that has been the story with uh, with uh, with kuldeep he tried going back to that but then you know in the process of changing these other things uh, you have kind of you know uh, compromised what your strength was so i think you know he went through that dilemma of what is strength 
uh, really is and what he is as a bowler. So that confusion has taken its toll and what you've seen in the last maybe a year or so was that confusion. I hope that he's over that phase. Uh, he's uh, He had to sit on the bench for a while, you know, and uh, maybe spoke to a few guys and maybe understand, understood himself that, you know, end of the day, if 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 I'm not there, part of the playing eleven, if I if I don't take wickets, I'm no one is going to pick me, and then you know no one is really bothered. So as a as a player, at times you have to make these calls for yourself, and uh, and and that's what I'm 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 looking to see from Kuldeep, you know, how he's approaching the game, uh, and and you can see it, you know, when when he's going to take the field, if if uh, he's playing today, then uh, we'll be able to see what kind of bowler or what kind of career graph you will see for him uh, going on from here. There's also yes, gotten sir. some uh, collateral damage there, I think, with Hardik's injury. Hardik's injury meant because uh, Bhuvi was also in and out. If you're going to play Bumra, Shami, Chehel, and Kuldeep, then your batting ends at seven. So, and if Hardik was not available, they had to play Jadeja at seven. The moment Jadeja came in, then you could only play one of those two. So there was a bit of collateral damage there as well. I don't know if the if if the retirement of Dhoni had had something to do with it because on the stump mic we used to hear Dhoni say all kinds of things. So I'm I'm looking forward. I, I actually quite like Chahal. I think Chahal's got a big heart. I love the way he keeps tossing it up. So I'd like to see Chahal among the wickets. Well, for the moment we do, as I said, we've talked about Kulcha as a confirmation. What about the other nine and the combination, Asha? Take us through the confirmed Indian eleven for this first of six games, three ODIs. I think there was only one place that was in doubt and that was which who keeps wickets. I think all the others picked themselves. Maybe Padikal's time will come. Ruturaj probably needs to do a little bit more. I don't think there was room for Rana in, in this setup. So it was only a question of whether you wanted to play Samson or whether you wanted to play uh, Ishan Kishan and get the additional left-hander. Because between Shikhar and Kunal Pandya, there's, there's no uh, left-hander. Also, I think they wanted to look at the Sri Lankan side. If there's a lot of left-handers, maybe they would have looked at Krishna Pagautam. But Pandya offers, uh, I, I still think Krunal offers a lot more. I think between Krunal and Hartik, you're looking at, uh, at 10 overs there between them. Not sure Krunal can get 10 uh, on his own. So they've gone with Ishan Kishan. That's not a bad birthday, birthday present to get. And dare I say, if you look down that side, and I'm, I'm not saying that because Zach is here, but just look down that side now. Ishan Kishan, Surya Kumar Yadav, Hardik Pandya, Krunal Pandya. No Rohit Sharma, no Jaspreet Bumra. You're looking at the entire MI side here. Playing for India. <laughs> Zaheer hasn't reacted for it as uh, as, <laughs> as expected. But let, let's get you on the trivia as well. It's from all of us. Uh, happy birthday and go well to Ishan Kishan. Only the second player, the second Indian player to make an ODI debut on his birthday. In case any of you out there happen to know who the uh, first one is. So, um, hashtag Prikwa's live get in the answer to us. We will, of course, have more trivia for you later. But for now, if you happen to know the answer to that. But uh, yeah, good opportunity again, uh, Zaheer, for someone to get a cap, uh, get it on your birthday. Not a bad birthday gift, is it? Absolutely. And I think, you know, the especially when you just uh, made debut in uh, just few months back in the in the other format, you know, so so you you are you're looking at yourself that, you know, you are you're progressing and uh, and, 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 and and that's always uh, uh, a confidence booster uh, with with Ishan Kishan, you know, he's, 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 he's full of talent. You know, he's, he's, he's young. He's got that power. Uh, he's his wicket keeper. So I, th I think, you know, for for Indian cricket on the whole, you know, when you're looking at Rishabh Pant as well, you know, somewhere when you, you kind of uh, put things together in say last year or so, he, he kind of knew, Rishabh also knew that, okay, you know, someone is there who is going to push him uh, to, uh, to, to claim his spot, to cement his spot at the international level. Uh, so, so that's the way I look at the game, you know. So, so in in the process, the Indian Indian cricket has has benefited for sure, and and it's it's, it's going to continue because uh, because if Ishan Kishan is playing consistently and, and scoring runs uh, whenever he gets opportunities, uh, that's that's actually going to bring out the best in Rishabh Pant as well. So, so overall for Indian cricket, these are all good signs, you know. The, you you talk about the strength, the bench strength. Uh, you you talk about uh, the emergence of all these young great players, uh, and uh, and and that is something which uh, which is always reassuring when you look at uh, Indian cricket and where it's heading. Certainly is uh, two teams, of course, out there 
India. We've shown you the Indian 11 looks like a top 11, despite the fact that, yes, so many of the Indian players who would probably otherwise have been there are over in England at the moment. Ashab, a couple of new yeah. names, completely new names to us, but it's enough familiar names for Sri Lanka to try and say, okay, let's capitalize. You know, it's. Uh See who's not in that side straight away. When we went to Sri Lanka in 2017, we saw Akhil Dhananjaya, we thought it's going to be a really good player. He doesn't even make this side. And the other very bright talent they're talking about is Patur Nisanka. Averages 60 plus in first class cricket in Sri Lanka, but Sri Lankan first class cricket has been diluted in recent times. So all these players, you look at Bhanuka, you look at Rajapaksa, they all did well on the tour of Pakistan where uh, in, in the T20, Sri Lanka actually won 3-0. There's experience in Chamira, there's experience in Udana, uh, who can talk at the end. There's there's batting up to number eight. With, uh, so this, this ability there, I think there's talent there. We don't know how good this talent is against high quality opposition. I'm interested in the batting first. Uh, because if there's any talk of the dew in Sri Lanka, or if there's any talk of rain, then the chasing side starts to benefit. So I'm just a little surprised that, uh, that Sri Lanka batting first. That uh, Rishabh, uh, that uh, Shikhar also said he wanted to bat first. Maybe it's the it, maybe it's the heat and humidity that will take a lot out of them. I don't know. But but this Sri Lankan side, I'm telling you, it won't be short on promise. But whether they'll be good enough in terms of match temperament, whether they're happy enough to play, whether they're tough enough, we'll wait and see. Yeah, tough is tough is a key word. Uh, Hasaranga would be one person who'd be who'd be key because he's he's not only uh, coming up as a Sri Lankan player in purely I mean I know this is ODIs but a lot of the T20 franchises around the world are showing interest in him so he's now becoming an, an international phenomenon almost if you have to say so because I can say from personal experience the CPL franchises were going really hard and that's the next big tournament coming up they were going hard after Hasaranga and one of them actually has picked him up so he's going to be a Sin Kitts player this year. So, so he, he's got something. He's got something to bring to the Sri Lankan side. There. Yeah. The other thing, Dusmanta Chamir has come back into form. I remember a few years ago there were two emerging fast bowlers that I was excited by. One was in Bangladesh, and it was Taskin Ahmed. He had genuine pace, and this is Dusmanta Chamira. And every time I looked at the bowling figures, Chamira was going at eight, nine runs and over. He was always expensive, but it's good to see he's come back because he's he's got he's got pace. He's been good in recent times. So I'm looking forward to seeing how he goes. He's he, he's uh, too good a bowler, you know. And mm -hmm. and uh, again, you know, that's one thing which which I've been harping on. Like you know, you 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 got to play more and more matches at the highest level under pressure for you to evolve as a bowler. And I think you know, with with Chamira also, he's understood as uh, as as he was he was part of the T10 as well. I happened to spend some uh, time with him as as well at that uh, stage. And uh, you know, he's, uh, he's he's a very hard working, very focused uh, youngster. Uh, uh, can really swing the ball. But at, at the international level, you know, at times the pressure gets to you and, you know, your, your body tightens and then, you know, the release uh, gets affected. So, I think, you know, that was the case with him. Uh, now, he's looking more uh, relaxed, you know, his approach uh, while in game, you know, at, uh, at in international games is, is, uh, is, is more assured. And, and, you know, once, once you do that and, and, and put up some performances like that, you know, then your journey becomes easier at that level. You know, you always have to cross that bridge uh, at least, you know, a few times, you know, to, to go levels up. You know, every time you have to cross one level, uh, you, you you got to be able to cross that bridge. Uh, it's, it's it's combination of both, right? Like, you know, the mental side and uh, the, the physical side and the performances. You know, at, at times, uh, you don't bowl well, but you still get those wickets. And those wickets maybe, you know, give you that confidence to... Uh, to take things forward uh, and propel you to that next level uh, at, at this level. Every time uh, we talk about crossing a bridge and I think of an India-Sri Lanka battle, I, I imagine the bridge between the, uh, the the tip of our country and the start of the island there. But uh, Harsha, someone you were excited about and you already mentioned it once on the show. Let's just look at him in a little more detail, Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, because uh, yes, we're talking about this particular three ODIs, but it's the T20Is, the T20 World Cup that we're talking about. And certainly the spearhead of our attack, like a certain gentleman on the show used to be at one point in time. No, big player. No doubt Bhuvaneshwar Kumar, big player. If Bhuvi is in form, We've seen what effect he can have on sunrisers, but he, if he's in form, he's good for India. And when he came back in that period in between when he was fit, you look at his economy rates in ODI cricket, look at his economy rates in T20 cricket, the matches that he played, 
around four and a half, four point seven in ODI cricket, just over six in T20 cricket. Plus, he'll give you so much flexibility if him and Bumrah are playing together. You could go if the ball is really hooping around. You go three up for for Bhuvi. You could go two and two. You could come and bowl in the middle if Bhuvi is in form. It helps Bumrah as well. So I'm very keen that Bhuvneshwar does well. Plus, he'll give you a little bit of batting. And from what I, I I don't know him personally very well. Zach probably knows him better. But he strikes me as someone who gives 100% every time. You want that those kind of characters in your side. So I'm very I'm really hopeful that he stays fit through this and the IPL uh, because I think he's invaluable for the T20 World Cup. He also looks like a natural leader in a sense, Zaheer, because uh, when the, there was talk about who might be the captain of India for this series, he would have been one of the contenders, uh, Zaheer. Actually, he must call Zach up. He must call Zach up and say, how do I deal with these niggles? Because Zach has seen enough of those in his time. <laughs> well, he has, he has been through uh, a similar kind of journey, isn't it? In the last couple of years, at least, you know, by leading up to the World Cup, he was uh, suffering with that uh, groin, back, you know, those kind of issues, uh, which which has been keeping him away uh, from, from playing consistent cricket. I think the uh, Bhuvneshwar Kumar, as a bowler, you are never going to have any doubts. You know, uh, but Bhuvneshwar Kumar, uh, in terms of fitness and how things have been uh, evolving with him, as has been a bit of a concern. You know, so so every time I, I look at him, you know, you know what you're going to get out of him if he's there on the field. Uh, the question is, you know, how he's going to be on the field more regularly. And, you know, that has been the concern with him in the last two, three years, which he himself has at times uh, been frustrated about and it's it's understandable you know you you you're doing everything possible you are you're spending those uh, uh, those months in nca you're spending that time with the physios trainers you do everything right and you feel that okay now i'm ready to go you know now i'm going to get back i'm going to start uh, building up uh, from here what happens is you know you again face a setback and that has been uh, very very difficult for me also personally in my career at times to deal with and and, and similar the case uh, with with bhuvneshwar uh, so so the battle with him is is generally you know right now to to keep himself fit to uh, to to figure out a routine you know which is going to make sure that he's he's on the field uh, playing more games consistently over the period of time and and, and you know that is a, a process which involves a whole lot of a uh, lot of research work a whole lot of trial and error i would say uh, because he's had enough experiences now of coming back, getting injured, going back, then working on it and coming back, right? So you kind of know that, okay, you know, this is going to work for me. If I have overboard here, uh, how can I manage myself in the nets? How can I manage the intensity which uh, you you play with, you know, and, and uh, in, in, in game time? So, you know, so these are the things which are very, uh, very individualistic, very complicated at times. But uh, this is the kind of journey he has in uh, in in front of him uh, for for him to be available uh, uh, more regularly for uh, for the Indian team. If there's one word I can pick from everything that is summed up about that whole Bhuvaneshwar Kumar situation, it's manage. And I think management of himself as an individual, the injuries, and of course the balance of the white and the red ball. I think that should probably be the key to his next 18 months, Harsha. Look, he, see how much time he's got now. He finishes here on the 29th. I, I want him to I, I see how he goes with playing all six games. Between now and, say, the 17th, 18th of September, when, when the IPL starts, he's got time to work on his fitness and get fitter. I'd like to see how he plays those seven games. How do how do SRH handle him? Because he's a key for them. How, does they, how do they handle him? Because between the end of the IPL and the start of the T20 World Cup, there's literally, what, seven, eight, nine days? Some, something like that for India. So he's got to be handled really well going up there, and I, I guess he he knows his body very well. But you know, if, if, with with Shami, if Shami is bowling well in T20, Natarajan is coming in and he's available to you. Uh, Siraj is coming up really well, but there's something about Bhuvi simply because he's canny. He can bowl at different stages in the game. There's a nice feel good factor when Bhuvi is playing. You think, ah, hey, hey, you know. So that that's that's a nice feeling. So I hope we can manage him because he's he's what now, Zach? He's 30, 31. 30, 31 or thereabouts now. So he's, he's got to really manage himself well from here on. Just to give everybody an update, since we now know the uh, playing 11s for both India and Sri Lanka, uh, Sanju Samson, the reason why he was not in the 11 was because of a medical reason. Uh, he sprained his uh, wrist while cutting the cake for Ishan Kishan earlier this morning. No, no. <laughs> 
No, I've heard all kinds of injuries. I mean, no, I've heard, it, I heard someone going out of a series. Mark Boucher, someone, I think, because he cut his finger with a bread knife. About no, 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 I, was just, I was just trying. Yeah. I was just trying to be facetious no, about no, no. The, the fact that Ishan Kishan has come in on his birthday. Uh, maybe his birthday cake had something, but it is a ligament. Way. It's a knee injury. Uh, ligament knee injury to Sanju Samson, which is why he wasn't even available for selection, which paved the way for, uh, which is paved the way for Ishan Kishan. It's being tracked by the medical team, but uh, unfortunate uh, Zahid for for Sanju to miss out in this manner. He was the first choice. Well, he's he's been he's been uh, waiting for to kickstart his his international career. You know, we again is is another player who we often speak about. Is he's been around for like uh, like what now eight ten years? We we've been seeing him in in in, in IPL uh, playing those good knocks, you know, uh, and uh, and and have been uh, waiting for that opportunity uh, at, at at the international level. He's he's got few now. <laughs> you can you can actually see it that like you know he's he's got number of opportunities, uh, but something or the other keeps happening, uh, and and you know just kind of uh, not being able to get that that consistent uh, match time, I would say, and and then that is something uh, which we'll we'll have to wait and see because these are are, are very uh, key elements of of anyone's career, and I think you know uh, Harsha has seen a lot of cricket. Over the years, and I must have seen so many players with so much of talent. And sometimes you you feel that you know God knows what happened. Like you know how someone has progressed and someone has not. And and you know these these are the things which you can't really explain. Yeah, I hope it I hope it clears up in the next four or five days. There is available for T20 cricket. Well, I see both Samson and Ishan Kishan in that T20 uh, T20 side. But just that little story because why Rina took you seriously? England had a fast bowler called Chris Cole. Who got out of his bed and you know what you do? You get out of bed, you go ah, and you pull the intercostal muscle out of the test match. <laughs> so anything can happen. Fair enough, fair enough. I didn't know where I was leading when I said that bit on the cake, but yeah, happy birthday, Sham Kishan. Ligament injury for Sanju Samson. That's why he's not in the side. But some good news for all of you. We've brought you so much on Crick Buzz Live, but now on Crick Buzz Plus, there's something extra and something mouthwatering through this entire series. You can get clips of highlights from every single game, and in addition to all the conversation that we're bringing you, all the statistics, the analysis, and of course the ball-by-ball -ball commentary, you can now get these highlights clips. So look out for that on Crick Buzz Plus. That uh, really adds a proper plus to this entire series. But we also brought out a uh, little bit of trivia. We're going to bring you one more bit of trivia. Meanwhile, can we get a quick prediction on a score from both the gentlemen? Zahid, I'll come to you first. Sri Lanka win the toss. Pat first. It's 50 overs. Yeah, let's remind everyone. What's your uh, predicted Sri Lanka score? And I think they'd, they'd snatch it with both hands if you tell them that. But we'll wait and see what sort of a surface this is. Asha, was Zahid being generous there? Okay, normally, sure. I, yeah, normally at Primdas, you get a lot of runs at, uh, over there. And if Duke comes in at the end, it may not be enough. I'm still going 238, Chalo. I'm, I'm backing India's bowlers. Bhuvi, Char, Kulcha to come good. Hardik to bowl a good spell. Krunal slipping it in. I'm going about 238, Chalo. That's kind of where I was going, but I'll go even lower. I, I have confidence in India's bowlers and these guys just feeling their way into the series. 192. 192 is what I'm giving. I'm, I'm feeling generous. 192, I'm feeling for the Indian bowlers. And let's wrap up with um, a little bit of trivia, the second bit of trivia from today after who is the second player or the first player to make an ODI debut on his birthday from India. Joy factor question for today. And here it is as we wrap up our first show of the series. Here it is. So from our trivia guru, joy factor question for today is, Two cricketers made their debut in the same test match in the 90s. One got a first ball wicket. The other went on to set, along with his partner, a test and first class record. So we've got a lot of firsts. Listen to this question. Hashtag CrickBuzz Live. Fastest finger pick first. Get your answers in. We've got our predictions that are ranging from 192 the to 270 plus. Yeah, <laughs> the, the answers have come, come already. Fast. They have. So... So much to look forward to. This is just the first of six games. 
just the first of so many conversations we're going to have. Our next one is going to be a little chat in the 15th over on Crick Buzz Combox. Do join us then. For now, from Zaheer, Harsha and myself, that's all from Crick Buzz Live. Cheers.